Peace family, and welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Radio. This is your host, Brother Rich, and I'm on the lines with the priesthood tonight, Minister Jew, Noble, and Pooh. What's good, brothers? What's happening, Rich? What's good? What's going on? I'm good, man. It's good to have y'all on the program. Uh, I was talking to Minister Jew the other day, uh, and Pooh, and I was um, I was actually on a Facebook feed, and I was looking at some of the stuff y'all was posted about, you know, events that continue to happen that you brothers use astrology to um, predict, you know, whether it's Paris or whether it's other events. And I was saying, wow, that would be something good to speak about on the show. Now, when you think about, you know, making predictions, people think about Nostradamus. It's like, you know, they, they think right. about prophets. Right. They think they think about the big names. Right. So it's like That's uh, right. That's right. Y'all That's y'all right. y'all putting y'all putting yourself in an in an elite class. So well, I want on. y'all to bring some 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 facts tonight. You know what I'm saying? I want y'all to to show the people what y'all been talking about and let us know what's going on and let us know, you know, what we need to be up on. So I'm going to give you our brothers the opportunity to speak. I'll probably save the questions for the end. I'm going to just let y'all go through it because I know y'all y'all got a lot on this. Um, just because y'all been, you know, doing this. For, I know hip-hop, um, Ampu got the hip-hop astrology on YouTube. So I know Ampu stay going in far, as far as that. But um, I guess just to start out with, now, now when you think about, the first thing a person might say, when you think about people that make predictions, they may say, all right, now, are you dudes, do y'all make, a hundred predictions a year, and the five that y'all get right, then y'all consider y'all, y'all jump on those or these. How accurate is this astrology? Because I remember when I was about, uh, well, I don't, I forgot how old I was. I think I was about twenty, and um, I seen a book called The Astrology of Nine Eleven, and I read through it. I didn't understand it at the time, but I want people to know how important it is. And if it's something that's accurate, or if it's something that it's fifty fifty up in the air. So I'm just stop there. I'm gonna let y'all go in, and after y'all done, I guess I'm just ask y'all some questions. But go ahead, brother. All right, <clears throat> cool. Man. Well, we we got the master of astrology on the line, man. He be real, he be real humble and stuff. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> it is what it is. But I, I'll start this conversation and dive on off, right? <clears throat> to explain how important the art of mapping celestial bodies are, right? We have to start here in the country because this is where we have, uh, this is the center point reference for most of the people who are going to hear this show on YouTube. And I always like to uh, infuse into the dialogue a bit of emotion, right, because it's good to get people on the edge because maybe they'll be more attentive and listen when it strikes a chord inside of them. Right. We have we have situations like Santa Bland's, Mike Brown's, uh, you just named 97, uh, this recent Paris attack, uh, missing Malaysian aircraft liners, uh, Boston Marathon bombings, uh, it's interesting that this came up as a topic for us to discuss because just recently Ampu went and had all of the work that we predicted over the last two years. He went and had it printed out, put on paper, so we could actually look at some of these things right before our faces because a lot of this stuff we actually we put it out there and then we don't never go back and revisit it. So we have to really put it in front of us just to look at the scope and the magnitude of what we've actually produced, understanding the phenomenon. But when we look at these situations and instances, right, as to answer your first question that you asked about is the 50-50 list, Rich, and this, is all, this all has been cataloged, has been published. You can go read this stuff for yourself. You can check the dates when the, when the information was uploaded. You can check the dates where the articles and the blogs were written and then you can run it parallel to the dates in which these events, these massive events that shape shape your perception of the world, that shape the structure and the foundation of the political structure that we call government, right? And what shapes and molds particularly black people in the way that we're viewing uh, our treatment and behavior here uh, in this Western Hemisphere and abroad. So, we have to start there because 
what we're essentially saying is we know when the things are going to happen that's going to cause you to be in a pissy fit. It's going to cause you to be extremely aggressive and upset. It's going to cause you to make multiple posts on your Facebook feed, right? It's going to have you up in arms and having debates about what's going on in the black community and how the police are treating us, right? And so this is the role of the hot police. If we can tell you what's going to happen before it happens, and give you the exact dates where these things will manifest, give you these portals and pockets of time where we will see events take place that shape this globe, right, then it behooves the people who are having what I'm going to just flat out call it for what it is, sidebar commentary after the fact. You have to come talk to us because we're not, and I want to make it clear, we're just not making predictions on the strength to make predictions to say, ooh, we look at us. We know how to see when the Mike Brown or the Sandra Bland or the 9-11 or the latest Paris massacre is going to happen. We are, we are putting these things out on the public domain because, one, we want to garner the attention of the people who are having these intelligible conversations after the fact so that they can say, well, wait a minute. If I'm emotional and I'm trying to create something logical to fix the situation, but these brothers over here are, are telling me what's going to happen before I even get an opportunity to feel or think about what it is that's not happened yet, mm. then, then these essentially are the masters on the, on the board, as Ampu calls it. They're the bishops on the chessboard who advise the king, who advise the queen, right? And so you've always had your priesthood who understood the inner dynamics of consciousness and universal law, you see? So we have to look at that. And not only that, we understand the consciousness and the energy and how it moves to be able to use it to our benefit. So with that, I want to pass it over to Noble so he can talk about how your very government or this very government actually uses planetary coordinates to facilitate warfare on the planet. So, Noble, could you explain to them how that actually works? Well, for, for certain, certain. Um, you know, I always say that we have this dialogue right now, the core generating theme of these blog talk shows, these YouTube videos, when it comes to black consciousness, there's a problem in America. And we ain't blind in that. Mike Brown, Freddie Gray, like, we know that. There is a problem. Only two ways you can really solve a problem. But, you know, listen, if you're going to look at this from a government perspective, then you have to say, okay, what is their military strategy? What do they do? What, what is their chain of command? What's their psychology? So the U.S. Navy observatory is a military division. Its job is to observe planets, star bodies, bounce radio waves off of them to determine how far it is, create devices to basically send sound towards an object and listen to the object respond and determine the distance. Hmm. See, at what point, Rich, are, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, Kimmit, you walked around publicly with a dog mask on your face. 
a, a falcon bird on your head. Suns, pyramids, obelisks, pointing to Orion for what? Just because it's Orion? What can Orion do, if anything? So this is something that we know. Everybody knows it. And this is the awakening process. Hence, look at this. You know, look, 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 I mean, look what we're creating. And when I say we, I'm saying we as a culture. It, you, it's just a very thin line between this of understanding this right and wrong thing. I may get into that. But back to the Navy Observatory. They hold the master clock. What's that? They hold the master clock. The master clock synchronizes all other clocks. Man, you don't have to go to your device to say we went, we just went an hour back. Why? Because it's the military body that controls your concept of time. So then where did this concept even come from? Daylight saving time, initiated by the Wartime Act. Daylight savings time was initiated while the United States of America was off to war in World War I. Shut down the grid back home, save energy. Prime Minister will tell you what Benjamin Franklin did that created the event years later. Years later. So you're dealing with somebody that has a, a, a concept of time. If you want to look at this as, as, as war, you want to look at this as injustice, justice or, you know, like for real, justice or else, right? Okay. Let's start exploring the else. Let's start exploring that. Explore the else. Because you've got a problem down here. We got to get on these shows. We got to come together. We got to. We need to be more productive. The hood is still messed up from country to country. You know what I mean? Hood to hood. You know, it's, it's the same thing, the same pain, the same cry, the same march, the same funeral. It's the same thing, right? But on one side of the ledger too, you balling. You got more money than you ever had. Keep it 100. Got more money than you ever had collectively as a so-called race of people. You're balling. You're balling right now. Come on. Oprah, billion bar stuff. We're going to, you know, because we got, we got to talk economics, right? We got to talk all that, man. All that. All that. And it's real simple. It's the 12 ministries. It's real simple. But when you understand this, this concept of time in the form of opposition, because, listen, the number two man in the country, vice president, lives in the United States Navy Observatory. Lives there. Rich, next time you're on the street with the camcorder, ask people, where do the vice president live and watch how many people can answer that shit? Mm -hmm. Like, that, that's what you, everybody want to harp on the problem, it. Even even people that's lecturing talking about the problem. The way they move is real simple. United States War Department, the executive force, the one that got the tanks, the one to go pound your ass with the M sixteen, them that, that division there, they can't move until they receive intel, intelligence, data from the United States Navy Observatory. Wait a minute. The people that have the tanks. The moms, the one that's going to actually go put the work in, they can't make a move until they receive information from the United States Navy Observatory. Why? Because it's something called P&T. Position, navigation, timing. You got to know your position on the earth. You're spinning right now in space. Right now, you're spinning in space. Right now. 
spinning in space. So fast you don't even feel it. So position, navigation, how are we going to get there? It's the shortest route there. Timing, how long it takes. Zero three hundred. We there. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? We there. So that's the mind. That's 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 a military type mind. Like if if you're gonna be walking around in security berets with all these niggas around you, put it to work. Put it to work. I get it. it because nobody never talk about this, Rich. The get your hand out my pocket type nigga. The nigga that, that, that would give the distraction to kill Malcolm. The nigga that would actually draw the diagram of the house so they can murk Fred Hampton. So when you read in this thing, this, this black and white thing, you got to be real careful, real careful. Because we, you can see in the physical form, there's something to that. The streets will say you can't trust nobody. So, you know, in, in, in essence, man, it, it's, you know, the military can't move unless they know information, get their information from, from the timekeepers. And I'm, I'm just going to, I mean, it ain't nothing more to say for me, man. Like, like for real. Like, we we in a culture where you was just, ooh, 2012, 2012, the Great Awakening, 2012. Everybody heard of it. And at the core of that, like Hollywood did they thing, probably scared half of you to death, you know what I'm saying? But at the core of all of the 2012 phenomena, everyone knows, or if you just go look, it is absolutely rooted in what they will call Mayan Omec culture, without a shadow of a doubt, 2012 calendar, right? Now, here was a group of people who actually got pyramids, observatories, looking at stars, can tell you the time. They wrote about your future, thinking of you. And said in December 21st, 2012, there's a new era or the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a fact. We know about 2012 because of them. Well, damn, don't that mean or shouldn't it mean that someone amongst us in culture right now has the Quran would say? Every nation has sent a messenger speaking his own language. How is she going to recognize? How's the person going to really relate? Understand what I'm saying? You have alliances. You have that. So, uh, it ain't not really for me to say. You know, too much to say. You you have to have a timekeeper. You have to know that. Like, uh, uh, it's, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Let me say one thing. Listen, listen, listen. They just told you to turn your time back. They didn't even tell you they did it, and you accept that reality. You know what I'm saying? So the, the one question for, I guess, phase one, part one of this is this. Listen, if you can't tell time, if you can't tell the future, and this goes out to everybody that come on Rich Show, everybody that, it's, listen, we got to get serious about this, man. Like, stop, like, stop it. Like, what, like, it don't take us nothing but a decision to make a move. We can get money, if that's what it is. It, well, we, we, can, we can have it all. We can have wealth coming in for the work that we do. We act like we don't know how to set up a, a basic, simple retail business and train them on one another. And this is on different levels. And it fades into hip hop, and that's why we put it over there with the work. Because that's the chrono aspect of some shit. As soon as they make a certain move, it's going to change the whole dynamic of our cultural expression. So you're dealing with somebody that, 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 that told you to t turn your time back, and you did. Now, if you can't tell us the future, I'm saying, when you look at, the, when you look at this mo the model of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Let's really look at this model. Because if you want to talk, you want to talk about the opposition, the problem. Man, listen, you know where they at. It's called a Pentagon. Stop playing. 
You don't know where it is? Your math question don't work? You don't know how to get to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and have a, have a discussion? Stop playing. You know where it is. You can do that. But like, how long are we going to keep it among us in the streets about ideology? When are we going to go take it to this dude for real? For real. Like us. Everybody that comes through here, Rich. Everybody. I ain't got to say no names. Everybody. Well, give, give me an so that's example. That's the reason we're having a conversation. Go ahead. Give me an example, uh, Ampoor Minister Jew. Uh, what do you look at in the stars for, like, the recent um, event that took place, like, uh, with, with this whole Paris thing? What would you look for to say, you know what, on this day, Friday the 13th, um, November 13th, 2015, something looked like it's going to happen? What are, what are you looking for in astrology to, to signal that? Well, <clears throat> all right. Here's the deal, right? <clears throat> I never forget this day. It was back in 2012. And Pooh called me, right? He said, Jew, you won't believe this. I think I'm on to something. And so he he's sending me this data. And he's like, I need you to check with me. So what I did was we went back at least 150 years in history, and found every major event that you can think of. Malcolm X murder, Martin mm. Luther King's murder, uh, uh, when they stormed the shores of Normandy, right, that they call what they call it, Operation Neptune, right? That's, that's right. Uh, we, went, we, went, we just went back and traced the history down, and then we said, well, wait a minute, this cannot be coincidental. So then we decided that from that day forward, we were going to make a record and publish these days where we saw these portals opening up. Now, we, take, we took a solemn oath that we're never going to tell anybody what to look for, right? Because, because if in the wrong hands of whoever, then this thing can become extremely dangerous because, <laughs> no, I'm very serious about that. Extremely dangerous because it's, it's already volatile. It's That's all right. Paris, over 200 right. plus dead. Now imagine somebody comes along, right, and peeps game and then starts to utilize these portals because I'm going to tell you what's called in a phenomenon, Rich. The sick thoughts of man, and when I say that, <laughs> I'm including I'm including everybody in that. This is not restricted right. to some color lines. I'm not going to play these white people are the devil and the black people exist and the Koreans. Is, I'm not playing that game because let me tell you something. You want to know what the real boss is down here? It's called consciousness, Rich. Not, none, not nothing else. Everything else is secondary. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is Lord. And that's what's dictating the phenomenon that is happening down here called 9-11, Paris mm -hmm. attacks, all the way down, Rich, to natural disasters. So you had masters who came before us who said that man is responsible for hurricanes, earthquakes, and tornadoes. And then people heard that, and they said, this dude is out of his mind. That's an act of nature, brother. Man don't have no control over that. Oh, no, 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 my friend. You have no idea the power of human consciousness and the, the, the how it affects the elementals that exist on this planet. So you can see us say, to forecast when the largest typhoon on the record of typhoons ever hit, we publish that. You can see where we publish the large mudslides that took place on this planet. You can see where we publish the dates where you would see Nelson Mandela. 
Hugo Chavez, Maya Angelou, break out of this plane of existence. Mm -hmm. so, so now you have, so this thing is just not limited to terrorist attacks. This thing is just not limited to acts of violence. This thing spreads out to natural phenomenon that happens on the earth and people who are of high stature who have an effect on large bodies of people will leave this earth plane. So now you have white folks who do stuff like this, Rich. They put together global, coherent meditations, Rich. Right? <laughs> listen, listen, I'm going to say this, man. Mm -hmm. We got to stop playing these games and, 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 and saying who's inferior and, and playing these, massaging these egos down and, 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 and trying to puff up a, a false sense of self-esteem to somebody, man. Listen, the truth of the matter is the people who you call in your opposition, they're sitting somewhere in the laboratory right now smashing photons, electrons, and quarks into one another, right? Figuring out the mysteries of the very thing that is responsible of all things that exist in this physical spectrum of L-I-G-H-T. Okay? So much to the point, this is how, this is how advanced, and, and I don't like to give credit to, I don't want to say that, I don't want to overemphasize somebody else's genius, but I got to call a spade a spade. You see, they respect life so much, right, that they said in the midst of smashing these particles together, right, we're looking for the God particle, Rich. That's what they called it. So somebody inside of those, those think tanks understand that what you call your netter, your God, your Yah, your Muhammad, your Buddha, your Confucius, whatever you call it, your Krishna, is really light being personified in a human form through some type of story or allegory or religious text. But light is the Lord. And they understand that. So they say we're looking for the God particle inside of what we call light. And all we're doing is having, you know, these rumblings amongst each other about who got what first, mm -hmm. where this came from first. Meanwhile, when you look around, right, it, we have all these discussions about who had what first, but meanwhile, and I always emphasize this, I don't care who had it first, man. What's the function of the thing? Because the people who got it now, who are utilizing the technology now, they looked at the history of it, recognize the function of it, and have advanced in it, at least on an objective level, i.e. objects called devices, electronics. So, so what I'm saying is, Rich, is that while you have these people who we're calling opposition, they're sitting around doing global, world, coherent meditation for country to country, having an effect on physical matter. They had an experiment in D.C. where they used people on this coherent wave of consciousness. And they did this exercise for weeks on end, and the crime rate dropped at the time where they were doing the, ex the techniques. And so you get, because see, I, I read the comment section, Rich. I'm interested to see the feedback from the people who are listening. And some people just don't get it. Like, they don't get it. What I'm trying to explain to the people is this, is that timekeeping, quantum consciousness, and freedom, justice, and equality are tied together at the hip. And when we, and when we understand that the invisible, and I'm not talking no spooky stuff, I'm talking about light. When we understand how these invisible properties work, 
We become the gods and goddesses of our universe. So we're limiting ourselves. And another point is this, because I cannot go without saying this, man. I understand people's uh, folks are at different levels of their growth and development, right? But that doesn't mean I have to stop myself in my growth and development and say what I'm going to say. And so what I'm going to say is this. We have to cut it out. We're giving this man all of this credit with all of these uh, these theories about they're going to do this to us, they're setting us up for this. How, how you know? Where you get that intel from? Thank you. And why, and why didn't you stop it? And, and not only and why that, didn't you report it before it happened? And, and that's why what Apu said, if you can't keep time and you don't know the real workings of consciousness, then you are doing yourself a disservice by not looking out and seeking out people who understand that phenomenon to help you build up the empire. So if we can tell you, now watch this. If it's such a conspiracy, right, and they set this up so that they can do this to you all the way from Paris or whoever else try to do something to you, right, here's the question. We put these predictions out usually 60 days, 30, 60 days in advance, right? And we know this is time bomb. We should stop calling it predictions. We need to come up with another name because they're really not predictions at this point. They're actual truths. We oh. know it ahead of time. So the, the real deal is if we can tell you 60 to 90 days in advance when things are like this are going to happen, that means that we, and we don't know these people who are facilitating either the conspiracy or the authentic act that transpired. We don't know none of these people who would have been able to stuff up, whether it was staged or if it wasn't. So now here's the question that you must ponder. Is it actually the persons involved? Because we can put these dates out for the next 200 years and be dead spot on the money if humanity doesn't, doesn't change their temperament and realize that their consciousness is responsible for the phenomenon that happens in the external world. So now, if we know this to be a reality, and you can go check the track record from all the stuff that we put out in the last two years to verify and cross-reference yourself, don't believe us, go to Hip Hop Astrology TV and click on some of them links, and you watch it for yourself. So if we can tell you 30, 60, 90 days in advance, is it really a conspiracy or are we watching energy patterns mm. and people are being taken over mm. by different ways of consciousness mm. and then participating the act, really? Whoa. Huh? Huh? Because if we can tell you who, uh, what's going to happen two years from now today and then it happens on that day, some of the people who were quote unquote involved in the conspiracy don't even know that they're involved in it yet, Rich. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's so now right. so now this has to change your perception of what's really going on down here. So we got to cut the small talk out. It got to get cut out because people are being led. They're being led to this cup of water that's not completely crystal clear. And then their their perceptions of what's happening around them is turning them into these slaves, these mental slaves, right? And then we go on and on and on having these dialogues. You know, we go to work talking about it. We at the home talking about it. We, we're having these dialogues, and then we're constantly giving our power and giving our attention, which adds to the quantum effect, to create another event, for you to complain about and talk about what you always talk about. Thank you. So now you know what happens? Another incident happens somewhere, and then we go on these networks and we do the same thing all over again. We have a discussion about it for a couple <clears throat> weeks. We say how it was a conspiracy. We say it was, it was a co-op. It was a coup. It was a this. It was a that. 
right? Or we, you know, whatever we whatever we rationalize it to be, but yet we're saying we're detecting the energy 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 360 days in advance when some of the people who are going to be involved in the real plot or the conspiracy, if that's what you think it is, before they're even involved, which means this. Space, Rich, is intelligent. I'm going to say that again. That black stuff that you look out in the night sky and you think there's nothing there, mm-hmm. it's intelligent, Rich. Very. It records data, Rich. Mm-hmm. Just like how your hippocampus, let me, let me show you how beautiful you are, people. I want to get the power back to the people. We not you keep we keep giving the power right. over to government That's and right. to political figures. And I'm giving the power back to the people. Let me show you how beautiful you made. I just told you that space records memory. How do we know this? Let's just look at it. Me and Noble talk about it all the time. How can a person be born, let's just say hypothetically? Sun at five degrees Aries. We just, you know, throw it out of date. And then uh, today we just hypothetically say Mars in the sky is squaring this individual sun, that NATO sun, at five degrees, which is let's just say how many years, 30 years ago, whatever. This planet that's in the sky right now today will create a circumstance or an event that indicate the key words of Mars, blood, right, fighting, arguments, some type of physical workout or regiment, right? That particular body will cause an event or a circumstance with any one of these keywords to manifest in this person's life. Although the sun, where that person was born on that day, the sun ain't there today. It's not there. It's somewhere in Scorpio. But yet when that person was born, that's where the sun was at in that particular region of space. Mm -hmm. So we have to come to this conclusion that space itself it's recording events and phenomena. Mm-hmm. You have the same mechanism inside of your brain. And so when people hear me come on here and talk about the Bible, they get all upset and they feel it because they parrot and they're repeating all this stuff that these other people have told them, right? And I'm trying to give them the real game. When they translate the joint and the organic language, you can see that it ain't got nothing to do with secular history. You'll see that they said that Christ was buried where? In Galgata. But when you translate Galgata into the Greek Coptic text, you'll see that it means what, Rich? The land of the skull or the human brain, Rich. So now, wait a minute. What's buried in my skull? What's in this brain of mine? I just told you space records events. You got a little structure, Rich in the Olympic brain called the hippocampus, Rich, that records data and stores it that you call memory. Mm-hmm. That, also oh, produce, that also produces imagery. So what I'm saying to you is we as beings, are creating these events via the imagery that we continuously choose to fuse into our consciousness, the words that we continue to hear, and the and these mantras that we continue to repeat over and over again. So you know what happens? Every time we hit that same charged particle in our minds that revert back to terror, violence, etc., we project that energy back out on this screen of space called life or reality, and then we see the mirroring effects time and time again. But that's too heavy for people. They, wanted, they would rather just say, the government did it. 
And even though the government may have did it, what I'm telling you are you're the catalyst energetically for projecting that thought form into somebody else. Now, do you understand how important the news is? Why you, when you're watching that every morning and you keep seeing them same images over and over and over again? So go ahead, Rich. You, I think you had a question. Yeah, just listening to what you say, um, let's talk about frequencies. Let's talk about, I want to touch on the, the subject of being on a certain frequency. Uh, before I before I ask the question, I want to tell a real quick story to help illustrate my question. When I was young and my girl first moved in with me, um, you know, we adjusted to each other, so, you know, we were getting arguments about certain things. So I told myself, you know, I'm, I'm real, uh, I'm to myself, and, uh, you know, I speak to my higher self. i got a good relationship with my higher self. I get answers, I ask questions. So I'm like, um, you know, I want to, you know, I don't want to have arguments no more. So I notice I'm outside, and I'm about to get in an argument with somebody. Oh, some stupid shit, nothing serious, but it's an argument nonetheless. It's that frequency of argument, argumentation. So I, I know I was right. You know how you, when you know you're right, you, it makes you want to argue a little more sometimes, because you're like, man, this thing's crazy, or this girl is crazy, whatever, whatever. So I know I'm right in what I'm saying to the dude outside, but then something tells me, Rich, you know what? It's not about right or wrong. It's about what frequency you want to experience. So I could be right and still experience that frequency. And if I don't end the day with him, I won't end it with my girl at home because it's the same frequency. So my ego will tell me, nah, nigga, you right. Shut this nigga down. But then I'm going to stay on that frequency, and two weeks later it might happen at home. So moving on to the question. With that being said, a lot of the people – um, I. A lot of the people complain about the government. They may feel as though they have a right reason. They may feel as though it's justified. Uh, but like you said, every time all these events happen throughout the years, people complain about the government. But I also notice, if you go on YouTube, you listen to all the people with the knowledge, the so-called speakers, the so-called leaders, while the people are complaining about the government, the so-called teachers and leaders are complaining about the people. So much where we have a word for them, the sheeple. You know, there's plenty of words, but just one of the more famous ones in the collective consciousness is the sheeple. So we're complaining about them complaining, but meanwhile we're complaining about them. So it seems like we're all stuck on this frequency of complaining. So speak on that, and how can we get out of that frequency of complaining about one another? Because somebody may think, I got a little more knowledge than this person, so me complaining about you is not as bad as you complaining about the government, but it's still the same frequency. And it seems like we're we're trapped in this cycle of just everybody bitching about everybody. So how can we get out of this cycle? Everybody. I'm not just talking about the people, but the teachers, the so-called leaders. I'm talking about everybody. You want me to take that level? Or you, you want to yeah, yeah, you can go, you can go ahead. I, I'm going to add on, but go ahead. <clears throat> well, it's called being proactive. See, the reason that we're always able to complain, so you got to look at the, let's look at what a complaint is. You complaining because somebody did something to you, or you have a perception that somebody's gonna do something to you, right? So the reason why these complaints continue to grow and fester is because. People don't want to be proactive, and that goes for both sides, teachers and uh, the masses, right? Generally, the masses, because at least the teacher didn't put something together where they, they got a focus, they got a dedication, et cetera. And, like, I can, I can, I talk to Ampu so much, man, I can sense it in his tone. He, he's frustrated, and that's what happens to a lot of teachers. We become frustrated because... The people who are around, they hear it, right? And it becomes just, they think the data is just, you know, data that should just be stored just to say I know it. Nobody's applying anything anymore because the information is so rapid. So this leads people to continuously complain, right? Because this happened, this person did this to me, this person's going to do this to me. But when you become collective, you know what starts to happen? You start to have more ideas about how you can be better. 
you start to have more ideas about what you can add on to your proactiveness. I give you an example. We started our own group where we paying each other's bills. Been doing it for four years, Rich. Ain't nobody oh, yeah. came in and stopped. Ain't nobody came in and stopped us from doing nothing. We even paid three hundred plus bills That's in right. four years with the people who participate, right? And then we we got other people that have come along and took on the reins to step in and 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 now they're getting their creativity on, learning how to build these things, add more structure to what we've already created. That's what happens when you become proactive. But if you always sitting back analyzing somebody else's moves, right? Right? Kobe Bryant is a perfect example. If you're not going to analyze somebody's moves in order to be just as good as them or better, what are you doing? Nothing. That's what Kobe did. He sat back and analyzed Mike so much that he's almost just as good. So we spend too much time watching the other side, man. What are you doing on your side? What are you, it's like, it's, it's, you know, and then people are afraid to invest because you got a lot of these people who run off with folks' money. So I understand the people side of it, too. When you come to them with a proposition and you say, hey, would you please invest in this idea? We could build from the bottom up. People have uh, – people don't forget about their money, man. You know what I mean? So, so, so that has to be taken into consideration, too, because that's a lot, a lot of where a lot of the complaining is coming from, too. So people are not being upstanding, and the teachers are not being holistically upstanding and righteous, right? Or got a personal agenda. So it takes – Everybody has to start being proactive in producing and creating things, right? But but even that becomes difficult because, like, we, the stuff that we create, Rich, like, I don't see how people can hate on money. Like, I just don't see it. I just you hate on money. Like, we create these programs and do these things, right? And it's like people, you know, they don't, they don't want to gravitate towards it. You know, they, they can see all of these people having these experiences, right, and then they still have a reservation in their mind about prosperity, about abundance, right? So it, be, it just becomes difficult because people got these own mental roadblocks in their mind about being successful because they've been fed all of this unnecessary data, and that's where the cycle of complaining keeps coming from. All the unnecessary data leads people into uh, these 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 loops, and it's not enough proactive, productive uh, 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 examples being shown. It's not enough light. The pilot light is very low. So people got to become upstanding and righteous in what they're doing wholeheartedly, and then over extended periods of time, right? Because because we know what time is. Time heals. All wounds, they say, over an extended period of time, people will notice that and they will gravitate toward it. So it's not necessarily a, a overnight thing, but um, it just takes work, man. It's really it's, it's no short to this thing. You know, you got you got you got you got, you got, to, you got, to, you got to grind. You got to put the grind, in, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me roll on that, man. Um, that's a great question, Rich. That that that's the bomb, Diggy. And let, let me say this too, man. Uh, I, I was brought up, and you know, my, my, one of my first disciplines and knowledge myself was through the Nation of Islam. So I want to say that if I offend anyone that's listening, I sincerely apologize because that is not the goal. I'm passionate. Don't mistake it for craziness and and just being boastful. I'm passionate, and I'm like, yo. If there's a problem, I sincerely believe that if all the people unify, that y'all know what I'm talking about, all the people unify, we won't have no problems down here. And that can be on any plane of, that we choose to create, whether it's business, whether it's spirituality, whether it's communication, our own schools, our own money, our own proper health, our own knowing how to, the science of love, which I'm about to get into because that's how this opened it up. So I'm just saying and, and, and listen, on the other side of, of, of that passion and frustration, man, 
We, we got over half a million dollars in testimonials from the people. And big shout out to you, Rich, because many of the people, their lives are changing right here. They come from right here. The listeners can come on right now and tell you they went to a mailbox and all of a sudden had close to $3,000 from a couple years ago from a tax return that they didn't even know nothing about. Wasn't expecting it. $3,000 three years ago. But when he started applying the principles, he started attracting it. He started attracting it. Once he started applying, bam, instantly. We over a half a million dollars. That's real talk. So I'm very happy on the other side of the coin. So we can do we can do it however you want it. That's what I'm saying. And that's the power of the mind that the prime minister was talking about. But Rich, when you talk about frequency, man, um, and, and the cycle of complaining and and and, and notice and you you man you the wizard because you will notice a time frame will go past where the exact same thing will manifest, right? And what we have to really understand, like the Prime Minister said, was space is intelligent. It's so intelligent and you're so connected to it, it's your birthday. Come on, man. You love your birthday. You love it. And this is what makes you say, I'm Scorpio. I'm Pisces. It's where the sun was positioned on the day that you were born. You're connecting and identifying yourself with starlight. Whether you believe in it or not, one thing's for certain. You do know your zodiac sign. That's a fact. And the reason you know it is because you know you're a cosmic being full of light. Don't deny that part of yourself. You will get to it when you're ready, but don't, 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 don't deny it. Now, this thing is space could be in space. So basically, just think about it like this. We live in a place where we travel in a circle. We go in a circle around the sun. It takes approximately, what we say, 365 days to go around the sun. This was the, the answer to the question that Rich brought up earlier, the science of this thing. You're going in a circle, ladies and gentlemen, around the sun. You have to fit 365 days on the circle. Imagine it. See it. Because that's real. There are 365 days in a circle. Okay? Now. Find your birthday on that circle because that is your celestial station in this life, your birthday. That's why you represent it, all right? That's your celestial station on this circle. Do this. Create this because it is the map of your reality. It's how you're spinning. The earth is spinning towards the sun. It's spinning in an eastward direction. So... Everybody has a light station. Now, this means, Rich, because the sun is in the middle, this means that we see each other by angles of light. Because if your birthday is, let's just say, right next to me, I can say that's 30 degrees. If you straight across from me, straight across in the circle is 180 degrees. You're 180 degrees across from me. That's interesting because the sun actually is in the middle of the circle. So if you're 180 degrees away from me, Technically, I can't see through the sun, so I can't see you for who you really are, and it comes with the issue that's called opposition. You see? So each celestial space, we see each other by angles of light. That's a fact. Listen, when it gets to the winter and fall time, it ain't the sun saying, yo, I'm about to, I'm about to crank it down, I'm tired, I'm about to turn the heat down. That's not what's happening. The sun has an average constant temperature that it keeps. It's not getting cold. The earth is tilting at times when it becomes colder. For us, it tilts away from the sun. Okay. So that means if it's tilting away and seasons are changing and the sun is a constant temperature, then that must mean the angle of the light is intelligent and it's producing a phenomenon in its reality. Thus, you call it angels. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a cosmic thing. Your son of God is in the sky for real. Mm. It is the sun. Why else did you have a falcon head god with a sun? It's for you to understand the intricate connection with you and the cosmos. So everybody has a celestial station in space. Each station, depending on the angle of light, will produce a different season called me and you ain't on the same frequency. Me and you, we just ain't, we, we just ain't on that vibe. Me and this person, we are. It's all based off your understanding of the celestial station. You see, that produces the phenomenon. So, in truth, what you don't know is 
you're actually, and it makes sense because you physically experienced it, you're energetically attracted to the negativity in the person. You just have to say in, in, in that reality, ah, time passed and I had to live it out. And, and you don't know a person until you live with a person. Bull crap. Bull crap. There's a way that you can define this by understanding your station in space, man. You're a cosmic being, man. You know that. You're full of light. you got a heartbeat. Go rub your feet on carpet and touch something and watch you convey electricity. You are light, man. What? You're light. That's what you are. That's what you are. And you can use that intelligence any way you see fit, slash we see fit. So to answer the question, Rich, uh, if we get an understanding for us, what we do, me especially up on this mountain, this is the system that I'm talking about by understanding. Listen, every nation, every nation, this was the core of what the promise was saying, every nation has a calendar, Rich. But the Hebrews got a calendar. The Muslims got a calendar. Uh, everybody has a calendar system. That's very important, <laughs> obviously, and as we explained earlier. You see what I'm saying? So we have to understand these different stations of space. That's it. That's it. And in other words, it will be astrology. But it's not, it's not, I've been getting some, I don't, I, it, it's been explained, and I get it. I, I definitely get it. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to get to the core of that consciousness that is operating within all of them, and you become Jesus. You become the one that travels through them and not necessarily them revolving around you. That's just the, that's the basics. And, and, and they put that in the Bible. They put it on, man, that story of Job is dope. It was talking about cosmic forces on one, on, on one side of the coin. The thing is dope. The first thing he did was renounce his birthday. First thing he did. First thing he did. And he told you he had seven sons, and each son had a festival for the day of the week. Each day of the week is a planet. Sunday, day of the sun, Monday. Like, Rich, people act like we don't live in a place that's called Monday, the day of the moon. Saturday, day of Saturn. For real, stop playing. We live in that reality. When are we going to grow up and get into the cosmic science, for real, and embrace that power of our birthday and, and, and embrace that, that little sneak peek in that people be doing about their own zodiac sign? and really come into the power of themselves and try to understand this phenomenon themselves better. You know what I'm saying? So to answer that, Rich, man, we got to understand that frequency, man. we got to understand that. Because, you see, look, especially in the male-female dynamic, listen, listen, we got the, we, the these forces, Rich, and at, at the core, they represent fire, air, earth, and water, at the core, right? And you're made of that. You know what I'm saying? At the core, that's what these 12 zodiac signs represent. Some mingle. Air and fire, they say they mingle. You know what I'm saying? They, they go. You know what I mean? Water and earth, you water plants. They go. It's the feminine expression. Nothing with the mass. I'm more energetic. One is more receptive. You understand what I'm saying? This is a science, man. And the mere fact, the mere fact that a woman who is majority, you can say estrogen, and she does have some testosterone, and vice versa for a man, testosterone, and he does have some estrogen. You are yin and yang. A woman's yin yang, a man is yang yin. Right? There are two forces that just reverse, right, man and woman. Now, what are the maximum interactions that a man can have with a woman and vice versa? They both got two energies apiece. What is the maximum amount of interactions? People be like 16, 38. Come on, man. The maximum amount. They got two? <laughs> she got two. <laughs> two times two. Four. Four interactions. That's it. What are they? Her feminine to his feminine. His masculine to her masculine. Her feminine to his masculine. That's all we know in this world. On one, oh, I'm a man. I'm the sun. She the moon. She a woman. That's it. No, that is not it. We're going through it. And the last one is a role reversal. Yin yin. Women masculine energy can be attracted to a man's feminine energy. And when it's when it's negative energy involved. Because that's a role reversal. When his negative energy revolves, it looks like this. That nigga just sit at home and play games while I'm going at work all day. <laughs> Ain't his mama. That's what that looks like. So these different relationship types are really rooted in energetic forces. That's like you breathe invisible air. Right now we are alive because there's invisible air animating this body. You're going to have to get into the invisible forces to understand the nature in which you live. How can you not? You breathe invisible damn air. 
And so when we and, understand how this energy coalesces, we move in now. It's called the cosmic couple. Mm. And, 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 because I don't want to shoot, Cody, it's also called the cosmic art of war. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like this. I don't want to shoot, Cody. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Because, and a low blow, yo. No, because no, no, because 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 we are we are facing things in this reality that we don't like per se as a mm -hmm. collective amount of people, and that light that he spoke about that bends that has angles that's very intelligent, right? Has specific coding that can mm -hmm. be tapped into by people who are aware that they are one with the light. You see, this is just not a, we just not, we didn't come on, we didn't come on here to give you a dissertation about just a bland topic of astrology. We are literally telling you that the power of your mind, understanding and understanding that you are light, if we tap into it correctly and really change some of the circumstances, Okay, we we over the hour mark. I got one more question for the priesthood in the building. One more question. All right, uh, just about right before, um, you know, we talk about synchronicity and projecting and being attracted to certain energies or whatever. Right before I got in contact with you and Ample, um, uh, I was taught, I was building with Blue Pill about quantum physics, and we was we was doing videos. Um, I was filming him in Brooklyn. He was he was at my my, my spot where I been at in Brooklyn. So we was talking about mm -hmm. Neville Goddard, and we was talking about how much we appreciate his work and you know his work and all that. Let me read you something real quick. This is from The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, moving from desire to wishes fulfilled. Real quick, y'all. The light is consciousness. Consciousness is one manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is. For consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. I may conceive myself to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar, or a thief, but the center of my being remains the same regardless of the concept I hold of myself. At the center of manifestation, there is only one I am manifesting, manifesting in legions of forms and contents of the self, and, and I am that I am. So with that being said, me and Blue Pill building on Neville God, building on the book, we're building on that paragraph, and, and we just thinking about it like, yo, you know, that's why they say no man can serve two masters. Like, there's only one, there's only one intelligence at play here. So then Blue Pill said, yo, we were talking about good and evil. Blue Pill was like, yo, the devil is God in a ski mask. When that motherfucker lift up his ski mask, peekaboo, it's me. You just rearrange me, nigga. If you want me to be God again, rearrange me into that God particle. I could be whatever you want me to be. I'm Aladdin. I'm that genie in the lamp. Whatever you want me to be, I'll be. So I'm like, oh, shit, that was the... That was a, it was a great def it was a good sentence to use to define what we've been reading or whatever. God is the devil and the devil is God with the ski mask on. So with that being said, everything going on the past couple of years, I'm having these conversations with Minister Jew, having these conversations with Noble and Pooh. People seeing what's going on, they're like, damn, this is a evil motherfucking world. God damn, how can you tell me? That ain't no motherfucking devil. You hear what they said? This is the devil's world. This is this is hell on earth. Haven't we been taught that since we was babies? This is hell on earth. Then here you go. You got a couple of niggas. Negas. For if y'all want to be more comfortable. <laughs> One brother. <laughs> brother Rich, Minister Jew, Ample, on the phone, on the radio, on YouTube, on Block Talk, saying there's only one intelligence at work. Elaborate a little more for the people, because repetition is, 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 is everything. How it can is. Blue Pill say what he said? How can you say what he say? How can Ampu say what he say? How can Rich say what he say when we just we see what's going on in the TV? You trying to tell me that what we see happening with the police, with all that, it's only one intelligence at work? 
Ooh, that that that, that that's a cold blooded intelligence right there. If that's the case, that's some that's some cold blooded shit that hey. intelligence is doing. Hey. So, so go, go ahead, that's the last question. Go ahead, go ahead on that, y'all. Yeah. Hey, you know you want to go first? Um, yeah, man. Um, you know, God is a gangster, you know, in, in any form that you're going to get into it because, you know, you, you, your God is the God that's known to issue punishment. Let's keep it real. So, therefore, it, 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 it's usually one that's very violent, too, <laughs> you know. So, you know, when we understand that concept, man, um, um, that's just what it is, Rich. I mean, I, I, you know, you sent me to Sedona reading that, brother. When you was reading that, literally, I said, "Man, Rich Scorpio, I just saw Rich in 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 in, in ceremony in Sedona." <laughs> no real talk, man. I've been to Sedona three times, man. Like, that's like true. see, that's the thing, man. Like, we got some beautiful places on this earth. We know that. You know what I'm saying? We do. You know, um, vortex is energy. Like, you know, man, do you got to go there and connect with that energy? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when we're talking about, you know, you, you a man, go stand next to a mountain. See, see if you got the heart to climb it. Mm. Look at Mount mm. Everest if you want to. I know who ain't with group of people, and I can be very specific. I know what group of people or race ain't going climbing up Mount Motherfucking Everest. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, hey, call it what you want to. We know who that is. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just to tap into that beauty, man, tap into that force. Um, within your heart, within your mind, everybody know what's right. My closing statements, man, is, you know, we we in the age of Aquarius for the next 2,000 years. You know what I'm saying? I'm full planet B. I am the investor of the Aquarian age. I ain't making it up. I'm real talking. The reason why these predictions run like that is because there's an old school group that's called, that's called, they had their song, uh, uh, the age of Aquarius. You know what I mean? They had the song, the fifth dimension. That's been in the fifth dimension. Literally. Uh, a group of people came called the fifth dimension, right? You know, Word. Fifth yeah, dimension. Yeah, this is the yeah. age of Aquarius. Uh-huh. It uh-huh. was bringing me along, I'm saying, among culture. They come the Aquarians, showing you the future, showing you how to connect. The God force be up in the mountains. The God force be with the. Listen, man, you want to make it thunder, you want to make it rain, you want to make it snow, for real, get with Minister Jew on the mountain. When we go to priesthood mountain, come up to the mountain. You want to see thunder? You want to see clouds disappear? You want to see lightning strike specific places? For real? You want, you want to call on the power of the God, the one force, that one intelligence that you say you believe in? That God, why is he hiding, Rich? The conversation you and Blue Pill having is, the, look, that's what we be saying. Listen, God is crazy. Because God is alive. Stop playing these games and act like, and this is the street gospel side of me, by the way, which is the mixtape that's coming, the street gospel. Listen, man, God, and I, this is just me talking. And don't act like I'm having these conversations. God, why are we going through this? Can you do something about it? Are you there? Why is this happening again? Can you give us a sign? Can you just come out of heaven for once and really show yourself that you care, that, that we're tired of evil, we're tired of having to complain and march, we're tired of that? God, can you please make a sound? Mm. When do we have that conversation with God on the mountain? That's the one force. See, and I'm going to answer this and we're going to get out of here. <clears throat> Rich, the force that you call letter, God, whatever, right, it's neutral, Rich. Mm. It is, let me say it again. Please, please. It is neutral. The human being is the operating force or the operating system of that neutral force that you call God, letter, whatever, because people like to get into these semantics with these words. We all understand what we're talking about when we listen to these words, right? We're talking about a supreme force, an emanating force, right? So it's neutral, but you as an individual, 
have the opportunity to either put it in drive or put it in reverse. It will serve whoever, wherever, whenever. So the reason that you keep seeing these atrocities happen is because most people, especially in the Western Hemisphere, have been downloading a bunch of negative imagery because that in itself is what decides how the phenomenon will show up in this world. So if if you are watching whatever you're watching and you're feeding your mind specifically, because I want to be specific, but I don't want people to think that this is some hocus pocus, but I'm talking body parts. If you're feeding your hippocampus on a regular basis, right, is what you're going to see projected in your immediate environment most of the time, if not all of the time. We keep it 100. So all of these things that are happening, and people keep asking why we keep seeing more of the same, they just answered their question because you keep seeing more of the same. When are you going to decide to appropriate different imagery in your own mind? And that's why hmm. when you hear me have this dialogue about hmm. you can't name one thing that exists in this physical world, right, that did not come from the imagination of man or woman. It's another scripture that says, I killed and I make a lie. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hands. If that don't tell you how to nutrient the force is, I don't understand how else can you get it. Right. It's trying to tell you. You, you, the individual, are responsible for whatever side of the ledger that that force manifests in this world. So if you want to see a change in your objective world, you have to appropriate subjective imagery in your mind's eye that denotes a change. And then what happens is that force, which is light, i.e. the Pentagon, five sides, right, War Department, they trying to tell you we're playing on a level of light. That light has a way, once you tap into it, to decide how you're going to use it to penetrate through time and space and cause events. So that's why you keep seeing it, because you know what? I can guarantee you this. You go on your social media, wherever you go, and I can almost guarantee you 90% of the time it's somebody complaining, it's somebody saying what happened in the world that wasn't so good. Everybody is posting something about, oh, did you see this happen over here? Look what they did to somebody over here. And look what happened over here to these people. And isn't this sad? And all of these things, we keep on filling ourselves up and running our cup over with it. But because man doesn't know that he's God in the flesh, we can consistently find a scapegoat to hand it over to because it's much more convenient to say it's their fault, it's her fault, it's his fault, when there's only one universal consciousness. Period. Y'all get at the priesthood. Y'all want the real, real? Come on, let's get the priesthood, man. Leave your contact info, man. Come on, they got to get in contact with y'all. Hello? I'm, I mean, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. That listen, man. Thank you again, Rich. You know what I mean. Love, man. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I'm saying. And and you see your audience coming and inquiring and writing testimonials and showing that more money and more happiness has came into their lives. Seen it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to forward you a picture to show for this particular video where Minister Jew was talking about light. I'm going to show you a picture of when the heavens opened up and formed eyes 
like the eyes of God, that one universal intelligence opened up and showed eyes of light looking down upon us as we were in conversation actually about Don Cornelius crossing over and what was going on and what it meant. And the heavens opened up. All the while, I have a certain angelic script that's in the window. Rich is going to show you this picture, and you will see this light in the form of eyes. Get the book. Go to Amazon, Spiritual Wisdom for the 21st Century, and look at the pictures. Look at the proof. Right, indeed, man. I'm gonna tell you, man. This this show, this show, therapeutic like a mod for me, man. <laughs> when I hear this type of issue, I'm about to go. I live right next to Century Park, so I'm about to go take a walk and just meditate, be around nature, get some good air, get some good prana. So I'm about to do. I usually do that after the show, so I'm about to go do that right now. But it's it's just always therapeutic because you forget the importance of viewing the world from a, suge- a subjective lens sometimes with all the distractions mm-hmm. like um, Noble Amp who just t- talked about on social media and all that. Some, you, you'll forget. You can read a thousand books. You'll end up forgetting that shit. And you'll be like, and you got to remind yourself, like, oh, shit, this is a subjective reality. What the fuck am I doing? So I appreciate when y'all <laughs> come on the show and y'all drop these gems. Um, any other websites, phone numbers, anything else y'all want to give to people so they can contact y'all? I know your group Actually, is popping. I, I know y'all making a ton of money in that yeah. group. But go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Popping. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, 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 absolutely, man. And, and look, and shout out to you again, Rich, man. I, try, I Man, listen, we got people coming over from your show, man. We're going to applaud Rich for the work that he's doing yes. in the community. We got to yes. say that, man. We got to say this yes. brother right here, man, is doing phenomenal work, man. He's out here getting some of the best people, best information to share with the people, man so that they can actually uplift themselves, man, so we can play this brother short in no way, shape, or form, right? So they got to be said, man, people coming over from his audience, coming over to us, providing us business, and then getting the information that we drop on these shows and their lives changing. Brother Jerome just called me, heard me on the Rich Show. That's the brother who knows who just missed him, just got the $2,900 check that came out of, the, out, out of nowhere. And most of the people <laughs> having these experiences, coming from over from Rich Show. In fact, I was thinking maybe one show I can have a couple of the people come on and share their own personal testimonials. Yeah, that'd be dope. Platforms with Rich. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? So that, so people can hear it out of the out of the horse's mouth. Right? You ain't gotta you ain't gotta take my word. These are real people. You can go find them on mm-hmm. social media. You can go have a conversation with them. They can show you and send you the picture of the checks. Right? We're gonna expose ourselves all the way so people know this is a real. So anyway uh, much love to you, Rich, but go to the website, theimaginationguru.com, theimaginationguru.com. I just released an e-book called Imagination at Work. 60-page chumpy is short, but it's packed with data. I give you different references so you can be able to go back and check as you're actually reading the literature, the names, the dates, the neuroscientists who were involved the articles, the people who wrote the articles, so you can go pull these things up yourself to read it for your own eyes and see it as a reality or however you choose to see it once you read the book. So go get the imagination at work, man. There's techniques in there, some of the stuff that we use in the IF Prosperity Group where we got this half a million dollars. Um, I get into this quantum language extensively in Chapter 2. Um, chapter 1, I just get into the imagination, how it's quantum. So you definitely want to pick that book up, man, and it'll help you a lot have a further understanding of what we talk about on these platforms. Um, also, we got a membership over there, monthly membership. We just had our first conference call, webinar, and it's phenomenal, man, people sucking up the information. And in the, in, in the private network, or membership rather, you're going to get private videos, uh, monthly webinars, quantum coaching directly from myself and Al who teaching people how to apply these principles, man. You know, and what can we say, man? It's been nothing short of amazing and phenomenal. And we just don't keep on putting the work out there, man, so people, you have to view it, and you you ain't going to debate me. I'm going to put this work in front of you and tell you to fight that. Fight that. You know what I mean? Fight the proof. Mm -hmm. Fight the evidence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's that's what you like to see. You want to see the evidence? Okay, well, here go the evidence of the proof that I've been teaching the people, and this is what's happening. So now you're going to have to deal with that. You know what I mean? But... 
You know, that's what it is. And Hip Hop Astrology, man, hiphopastrology.com, Hip Hop Astrology TV on yeah. YouTube. Go watch them videos. Yeah. Man. Who's been dropping bars? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, you want to see the future? Go there. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> you you bumping on the ball? You bumping on the ball? Okay. Listen, uh, man, he was going to get shot at shot at. Told him when he was going to get arrested and got arrested, man. Hey, Mike, hey, if you told if you me wanna, he was going to get shot at, man. And you, and you want to know why Jeezy, you want to know why Jeezy calling himself Pastor Jeezy? Go check yeah. that out too, man. Yeah. He'll tell you the Mercury Jupiter yeah. connection. Listen, you know, man. so go check it out, man. Listen, man. In, yeah. Indeed, y'all. Yeah. This, this, this brother Rich, <laughs> don't wait to these. Don't wait to these brothers are no longer here to support them and talk about how great they are, how great they were. Support them right now. We don't have a lot of brothers from the hood dropping it on quantum physics and astrology like this. Um, a lot of times, the people have great information, but our people feel uncomfortable going to live. I said this before, listening to Esther Hicks. It just feels a little uncomfortable for our people sometimes. Because everybody in the audience, nobody looks like them. So they feel like they can't relate. Mm -hmm. So when a brother like Ann right. and a brother like you get on here, they feel like they can relate to y'all. We speak in a language that they can relate to. We speak with passion that they can relate to. So it makes it easier for them to make the transition from maybe a conspiracy realm to a quantum physics realm or whatever realm or a pro-black or whatever realm they are. They're able to understand it better. So... Respect the honor while these brothers are here in 2015 going on 16. We dropping it hard. Appreciate everybody that come on the show. But this is Brother Rich, y'all. We signing out. We're going to see y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.